So for our today's class, you know, we'll be looking into the continuation of, um, of precision uh, rectifiers, right? Where we'll be looking at an example and a computer analysis. And also we'll be looking at um, high input impedance uh, precision full wave rectifier, right? So that was the only thing left out in precision. And after that, you know, we'll be looking into uh, limiting circuits, limiting circuits and sample and hold. Fine. So, you know, precision rectifiers, why we were using this? We were just using the, the diodes initially, right? But then with diodes, it was not up to the mark, right? So, so we thought, fine, let us combine diodes along with op-amps and we will get, you know, proper outputs and hence the term came precision. Now, it is done for both half-wave rectifiers as well as full-wave rectifiers. So when I say half-wave, I can concentrate either on positive or the uh, negative side of the waveform or uh, you know when i say full wave then the rectification happens for both the positive and the negative side of the waveform so we also saw a few equations right uh, vapb right uh, this was with uh, half wave rectifier right we were not able to get you know full and we also solved some examples um, of course, you know, these type of examples, uh, you know, will not be coming for your examination point of view. Um, this is only for you to understand how the designing is done, right? Um, you know, with respect to non-saturating the precision rectifier. Okay, so this was shown just for your understanding. Okay, and we also saw the importance of this resistor R2. Right. So this was very much important for us because without which, uh, you know, there wouldn't be any kind of amplification. So having all this background in mind, right, having all this in mind, today we will try and continue uh, with our precision rectifiers. So we will, we will try and solve an example. Okay, as mentioned, these examples wouldn't be coming for your exam point of view but for your knowledge purpose right for your understanding as to how these uh, circuits are designed how the circuits are optimized then you should know um, you know these kind of design problems right so design the precision full wave rectifier uh, circuit which is in uh, 9.4 okay so we are using this circuit here where it has two sections, a precision rectifier and a summing circuit. Why is it a summing circuit? As I told you previously, we are giving different types of inputs, R4, R5, and it is being fed to the non-inverting, um, sorry, to the inverting terminal. Right. So, let me probably uh, try and bring the diagram here so that you know, it will be uh, easy for you. So just a moment. It's going to be a little difficult. Okay. So. Just a moment. Okay, now it should be fine. I've brought in the circuit. Right. So we will refer to this circuit and uh, we will solve the problem. Okay. So design the full wave uh, rectifier circuit. So here, you know, we are having a precision rectifier and we have a summing uh, circuit, right? And uh, uh, in one of the outputs, okay. Uh, for example, yeah, here V naught. One of the outputs is actually fed to you know, non-inverting. Okay, you can see B at point B, uh, what is going to be at point B, what is going to be at point A, okay, and what is going to be my total uh, V naught, V naught is going to be here, right, so this is going to be my V A, okay, V A is nothing but your input voltage, right, and uh, at V B, what am I going to get, you know, I'm going to get a uh, uh, rectified uh, output, and since this is connected to a negative terminal, right, so there's going to be an inversion happening here, right? Positive cycle becomes the negative. And uh, we are just clipping off the uh, negative side because it's a half wave rectifier, 
isn't it? So we are not concentrating on the full uh, you know, positive half and the negative half. Okay. So design a full wave uh, rectifier circuit as in the figure to produce a two volt peak to peak uh, output from a sine wave input of 0.5. So we are uh, you know, getting some uh, inputs here, right? So that is nothing but 0.5 volts uh, peak to peak was one, right? And we're going to have two volts uh, peak output and input is 0.5 peak and the frequency is one megahertz okay and we are going to use supply of about 15 uh, volts plus or minus 15 volts so taking all this uh, we will try and sort so we are going to select as usual 500 microamps the i1 the current that is actually you know, passing through here so why are we using this kind of current so that you know the diode operation is proper anything that comes below you know this 500 microamp years of course your diodes will function but then you cannot expect them to be that optimal it's as good as you know giving you less food and uh, you know making you perform better it's it's kind of difficult so when we talk of uh, devices perspective right so even there you need to give them proper voltages proper currents and you know proper operating environment i cannot just you know operate them say in 70 degree centigrade or probably i cannot operate them in minus 10 degree centigrade so they need to have a room temperature right something like you know uh, 20 uh, 25 degree centigrade right? that should be uh, ideal for any circuit to perform uh, in a proper way Right, so getting back to our problem, we are going to use I1 is equal to 500 microamps, right? And uh, R1, we know that V is equal to IR, so R1 is equal to V1 by I1. We have V1 here, right? So we'll just bring it down and uh, we will use the same value here, 0.5, and I1 was already taken as 500 uh, micro. So when we do this, we should be getting about one kilo ohms. Okay, so since that's standard, right? So we will stick to it and we're not going to increase or decrease the value of resistance. We will just use it as it is, right? Next, what we will do is uh, we'll try and make sure that this condition is met, okay? Usually we take uh, R2, you know, uh, not equal to R1, but then we'll try and make it a little higher than R1, right? So that is because of the amplification purpose. So in any of the problem, what you can do is you can take this two times of R1, right? And um, whatever is the value, you can just double it, okay? So either you can, uh, you know, you can probably take this combination, which is 1K in series, two 1K in series. So series resistance gets added up. Now, if I have to calculate R3, right, R3 is here, and we know that it's in a parallel combination with R1 and R2, right? So, so we are getting about 670, so I'm going to use a standard one, which is 680, okay? Now, uh, we need to make sure that, you know, R3 is equal to, um, yeah, the yeah, R3 value we have found out. Now, we need to make sure that R4, Okay, the resistance here that you see R4, R5, and R1. Okay, all these should be the same. Okay, so that um, you know the symmetricity is maintained. If in case it's not same, okay, so what are those resistors? R4, okay, then R5, okay, and then R1. So I am making sure that you know, these resistors are same. It's as good as input resistors. So here it is R1 is input resistor to op-amp one and R4, R5 are like the resistors uh, to input resistors to T2. So I am making sure that these symmetricity is maintained across both the op-amps. So I'm, I, I already have that R1 is equal to 1K, right? So I will use the same value here as well. Now, for output to be two volts, right? It's even in the question. We need to produce output is equal to two volts. So I know V naught is equal to two volts, right? So R6, what is going to be my R6? R6 is equal to output, which is V naught output by input VI into R5, 
into R5 because this is taking from you know the first stage. First stage here becomes the precision rectifier, and the second stage here becomes the summing circuit. Right? So it's taken from the first stage and it's very much dependent on R5. Um, so V0 is given in the question 2, and VI we know that it's about 0.5 volts and r5 r5 we have taken equal to r1 so once we have that you know we are sure of getting about four kilo so four is not a standard so instead i will use a 3.9 still you want to you know exactly stick to your theoretical values then you you may have to use 1k in series four types right that could probably complicate your circuit or there can be a lot of uh, delay and loss See students, you should keep in mind that whenever you increase a centimeter, uh, leave centimeter, we will talk about millimeter, right? So because nowadays it's all the age of nanotechnology and, uh, uh, you know, these circuits are so sensitive that, you know, even one millimeter increase in uh, the wire length, you know, increases the resistance and the capacitance. So these are nothing but called as parasitics. Right. So, so these parasitic resistance and parasitic capacitances increase with every increase or one mm increase in wire length. Now, if I have to use so many resistors, let's say four resistors in series, then think about uh, the length of you know the wire that's actually getting connected between these four um, resistors. Right. So that becomes uh, you know a little complex, and you're going to lose a lot of. Uh, uh, information so how are you going to lose with the you know built up of uh, building up of resistance and capacitance so op-amps are actually very ideal right we do not have uh, any kind of uh, you know uh, disturbances actually with respect to op-amp whatever is the input the same thing comes at the output right <clears throat> but with yeah, these kind of you know unconventional uh, ways of designing okay uh, having the circuit uh, having the series combination of these resistors one or two is fine but then if you want to just prolong it okay if you want to increase it then you know, that becomes non-ideal way of designing fine so we have r6 now and then the only thing left is r7 we know that r7 is equal to r4 and in parallel with r5 and parallel with r6 so all these are in parallel combinations right okay so 1k 1k and 3.9k i'm remember i'm using this value which i am going to use practically i'm not going to use the theoretical value so i have this here okay so i am going to get about uh, 443 ohms so 443 is not a standard as we know so we will be taking uh, over the counter which which means whichever is available the next standard which is about 470 of course there's going to be a little difference about 30 ohms of difference but then it's not really going to impact because you know we are uh, you know making minor changes okay now we have diodes right these diodes need to be wor working in forward um, bias condition if in case it's in reverse then it wouldn't function right so we need to make sure that these diodes also has certain kind of um, you know uh, rules that are followed so for diodes d1 and d2 okay vr should be greater than d volts okay so 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 the voltage right should be greater than 30 volts and uh, tr max is equal to 0 0.1 just like how we saw previously right the rise time okay the maximum rise time should be at least 0 0.1 microsecond so we are going to compensate a1 okay uh, as a voltage follower and a2 for gain of so this is going to be the formula right uh, acl2 if i have to calculate acl2 okay is equal to r6 plus r4 okay in parallel r6 there is r6 is here the feedback resistor r6 plus r4 and r5 that's in parallel because see i am i am having this whole network here right so let me let me just draw that. Okay. So your feedback network, okay, is actually all of this here, right? It has R six, R four, R five. 
So R6 plus R4 and R5 are NV in parallel, right? Divided by R4, R5. So that should give me about nine, which is the gain, right? The closed loop gain of second stage of that. So of course, these examples, you know, you're not going to get for your examination point of view, but then it's important to understand how it is designed. Basically, make sure that, uh, you know, uh, you are, um, just a moment, yeah. So what you can do is, you know, just make sure, uh, make sure that this R1, R4, R5 are made equal, okay? So that is one important point. And R2 should be two times of R1. That is also an important condition. Once these conditions are met, rest all is your, uh, you know, uh, the normal formula that you would apply and get the values. Right. So now we will move on to the next, uh, you know, of course you don't have to put this in your examination. Okay, but this is just for your understanding. The computer analysis, right? How um, computer will actually calculate and uh, will be able to get the waveform. So if you can observe, right, these waveforms, um, this is, you know, through the circuit um, where you have got this uh, sort of waveform. And here also you can see, right, two volts uh, peak to peak is maintained, right? Peak to peak plus two, minus two. So that's called peak to peak. And uh, uh, here it's going to be two volts, right? And uh, uh, the point at V7, right? V7, we called it as VB, right? And this was called VA, right? You can recall, right? This was VA and this was called VB, right? So here, of course, you know, they are using different uh, terminologies, but referring to the same junctions. Right. Okay. So this is the graphical analysis of a precision full wave rectifier, and the output stage uh, is a summing circuit, and it has voltage gain of one. Okay. So why is this done? So that the peak output equals to the peak input voltage. So whatever peak output that you have here, so this is also two volts, and the peak input is also two volts. Right. So even though we are getting about minus four volts here, right, we are trying to make sure that at V12, right, at this V0, V0 is V12 here, at V12, I'm going to have plus two volts, right? Okay. So now we'll be looking at the high input impedance precision full wave rectifier. So Previously, you know, what all we saw was not, you know, having a very high input impedance. It was just, you know, normal kind of uh, uh, resistance. But then right now we are going to see very high input impedance and we will see, uh, you know, how it's actually going to close to. So you can see that, you know, this R3, R4, R5, R6. So this chain is actually brought up here. Okay. So this is nothing but a resistor voltage drop okay so as you know it passes by uh, there is going to be a drop in potential so we will see to it you know how this is actually working so we have taken up voltages at different points so at uh, uh, you know output which is going to be uh, two volts peak to peak like how we saw in the computer analysis and uh, at bb we are seeing another uh, uh, you know, section here uh, where you have uh, different uh, points given here, right? VA is here, VB is here, VC is here, and VD is here, right? So at uh, VB, okay, at this point also, uh, we are going to get a kind of, you know, a sinusoidal, of course, it's not a perfect one, but yeah. It's a sinusoidal form, and uh, uh, can can you tell me why it's actually you know at VB we are getting a sinusoidal? This is because you know it's trying to equate itself with uh, you know the positive potential, right? The positive terminal, the positive terminal here is connected to VI, right? So at VI we are going to give this kind of input, 
So whatever is given at plus, right, the same thing would appear at the minus terminal. So hence at point B also, right, um, thinking of the properties of OPAM, right, I should be uh, getting the same kind of potential. Okay. Next uh, at point C, at point C, what is happening? We are having diodes here connected, you know, at the output terminal and with the feedback network, right? D1 and D2. So because of which, you know, they, you can see that then the, the negative side is actually, you know, uh, increased. So you can imagine this as, you know, minus four volts, right? remember? Yeah, this minus four volts. So you can see that, you know, it is uh, a little, you know, bigger than the input uh, waveform. So at point D, at point D, due to the drop, you know, due to the drop of uh, the voltages, right? So what is going to happen? We are going to reconstruct our original image. So you can see that, you know, this image, okay, is equivalent to this. So in between, you know, there is a lot of processing happening, right? Uh, we saw uh, kind of uh, rectification happening, then we saw, you know, the same potential at different point. Of course, you know, this, this was only for our understanding, but the processing happened here at BC, at point C, right? Where uh, negative uh, terminal, now instead of minus two, it becomes minus four, right? The negative uh, side of the waveform. And after this, you know, again, there was uh, processing done, right? It was passed through a resistance R6 uh, and R5 between R6 and R5, right? So we were able to kind of, you know, chip it off. Right? We were able to chip it off and get our proper output here. Right. So now we will see exactly how this circuit works. Okay, now that you have the overview of the circuit, right, and uh, the uh, voltage drops, right. So we will see now how this circuit works. A precision full wave rectifier, and uh, keep in mind this circuit is important, right? It could appear in your examinations also. A precision full wave uh, rectifier uses a non-inverting amplifier configuration. So we are using a non-inverting here. That's why you're able to see, you know, uh, the, the positive one remaining positive. But then here, you know, there is a slight change that is happening because of the diode combination. So, okay, signal source and open A1 together with resistors R3 and R4 see R3 and R4 is here and in between we have point B, okay, constitutes non-inverting amplifier uh, as does A2 combined with R5 and R6. So R5 and R6 it is with respect to A2, R3 and R4 is with respect to A1, okay. So A1, R3, R4, A2, R5, R6, right. Okay. However, uh, diodes D1 and D2 also affect the operation. They not only affect, they have a major impact, right? Okay. Consider what occurs during the positive half cycle of the input waveform. The output terminal of A2 is positive. So whatever you're getting, you know, in the positive half cycle, uh, that is also going to be positive, right? So, but then this is connected in a reverse fashion. D1 is connected in a reverse fashion. So D2 is forward biased and D1 is reverse biased, right? It is very much understood. You're getting the positive potential here. So anode is getting connected to a positive uh, potential and you have you know, the, the opposite side with the cathode. So D2 is forward biased and D1 is the reverse biased. Fine. The voltage at junction of resistors R5 and R6, so that is termed as terminal D, uh, follows VI. Okay, so VI at the inverting input of terminal A2. Okay, so VI, whatever VI that we are giving, right? So that is being followed at the junction. Okay, 
the voltage at the junction of R3 and R4, that is terminal B, okay? So this terminal B, okay, also follows the input voltage applied to the non-inverting. So here also I'm going to get the same output and here also I'm going to get the same output. Okay, non-inverting input of A1. With V1 appearing at uh, terminal B, so V1 is also appearing at terminal B, okay, and consequently uh, at terminal B, uh, we have V1 appearing, right? So see VB and VD, both are same. Right, these waveforms both are same. So this VB here, okay, and VD here. So both are same compared with our input voltage VI. Okay. Consequently, there is no current flowing through R3. Okay, R3, there is no current flowing to R3 and no voltage drop across R3. Current I6 flows via D2. So whatever um, the current that you have here, no, that is I6. So this current will actually flow through uh, D2. Okay, that is the second diode. The circuit output voltage at terminal A is also same as B. Okay, so A, B, both are same because as I told you, um, the output is going to follow the input and the non-inverting terminal will have the output which will try to you know replicate the one which is a non-inverting okay. right. now now we are going to you know dive deep into it and we are going to understand um, you know what is going to happen in the negative so in the positive what happened d2 was you know, forward biased and uh, we found that uh, d1 was reverse bias now in the in the second half of the waveform d2 is going to be in the reverse bias and d1 is going to be in the forward bias okay so in the negative half of the input uh, we consider the effect of vi is equal to minus one volt on the resistor drop uh, drops resistor voltage drops okay so you can see that you know this uh, minus one okay that is because of the negative uh, or we can say the negative half of the waveform right? the positive side the negative side of the waveform so during the input uh, voltage negative half cycle d2 is reverse biased as i told you right and d1 is going to be in forward biased format forward biased okay so this uh, gives a minus one volt at terminal d and minus two volt at terminal c so that's why you know you are able to see this kind of waveform okay minus one and minus one so you know you are able to see this see there is minus two here at this point right so that is why minus one minus one became minus two and I am going to see this kind of waveform in the negative uh, half of the cycle. Okay. So as uh, we can see that in A2, okay, R5 and R6 function as non-inverting amplifier. So here you know, A2 is functioning as a non-inverting amplifier. Okay, why? Because the inputs are given to positive terminal. Right. The voltage at terminal B follows the input, so VB is equal to minus one. So VB anyway is going to be minus one because here it's minus one, right? So minus one will come here. The same thing is connected because it's a full total wire. So this gives a one volt voltage drop across R4. Okay, uh, R4 positive at the top of R4 because R3 is equal to uh, two times of R4. Okay, so that's an important thing. So there's a two volt drop across R3. So if you can see here, right, R3, there is going to be a two volt drop, two volt drop. So there is uh, once again positive at the top of resistor. This results in V0 is equal to plus one volt. So two minus 
uh, one okay so that is going to be plus one okay remember this minus one right and uh, this two so ultimately I'm, I'm going to get about plus one volt right so it is seen that during the input negative half cycle the output voltage is positive going version of the input right so it's a positive version here even though the waveform is negative okay as already explained the positive half cycles of the input are reproduced at the output so why is that happening whatever positive cycle was here right so that same thing is reproduced right because we are able to see the same potential at voltage p at point p v b right another approach uh, is that a1 r3 and r4 constitute an inverting uh, amplifier to voltages applied at bottom of r4 so this is now working as inverting configuration right? because when i give minus potential so this works as an inverting potential so if i'm giving a positive uh, voltage right it should be giving me a negative if i'm giving a negative so it should give me a positive right so right now we are dealing with negative voltage and uh, uh, this was actually in the non-inverting configuration but due to the input what happened it became an inverting configuration okay fine so to design the full wave uh, rectifier circuit r6 is first calculated so so the most important resistor that we can understand here is r6 so r6 is the most important resistor so first design r6 and then later you can uh, you know check with uh, uh, r5 r4 and r3 right so what we do is r6 is first calculated and then we try to you know equate them okay we try to equate r4 r5 and r6 so four five six so this one just a moment r4 r5 and r6 okay so these three are made equal and r3 is made two times of r4 r3 is made two times of r4 okay so resistors r1 and r2 are determined in usual way okay how we use the formula and uh, now accordingly the input terminals of the open right so in this way we calculate the resistances okay so um, yeah so we have seen this pipes as to how this uh, you know resistances can be designed right so basically first we need to um, design r6 and then based on that the other resistors are done okay so when i say two times of r4 r4 is nothing but r6 so which means i need r6 first so r3 will be two times of r6 right okay so high input impedance uh, uh, based on this uh, full wave uh, precision rectifier so we have a small problem here and we will just look into it as mentioned previously right so these problems wouldn't come but uh, you know somehow i wanted you all to know how these designs are applicable okay using bipolar op-amps with uh, uh, you know vcc is equal to uh, plus or minus 15 volts so we are going to use uh, the same figure here right which, have, which we have used right so probably let me just bring it up here okay so okay so just bring it up here so hope you are able to see it in proper fashion right just reduce it a little So we'll be using the same figure here, right? Which we saw previously. Uh, I six we are taking as um, five hundred microamps, right? So R six is equal to one volt, okay? Because we have input one volt peak, okay? So we are having uh, the inputs as plus or minus fifteen volts. VCC is plus or minus fifteen volts, and the high input impedance 
uh, whenever see whenever you get this high input impedance you need to have this kind of uh, configuration where you are having two op amps a and the input is one volt peak peak and uh, no amplification uh, is to occur so when i when when you say that no amplification is to occur you have to be careful with the uh, resistor selection okay Thanks. So R6 uh, will be equal to Bi by I6. So Bi is here, right? Bi is here and I6. So the currents that are flowing through the system R6. So we have assumed I6 to be about uh, 500 micro. Okay. And Bi, we have it as one volt. So we should be getting about uh, two kilo ohms, right? So standard is 1.8, we'll use that. Four, five, six will be the same, right? Now R three is going to be two times of R four. Okay, so two times of R four. R four now is one point eight. So one point eight in series. So two resistors, and R one. We can see R one here. Okay, uh, is in parallel combination with R three and R four. So I should be getting about 1.2, that is standard. So I'll just go with it. Again, R2, R2, this is in parallel with R5 and R6, right? Pretty simple. And uh, now, now we, we can compensate A1 for voltage gain of 2, and uh, A2 can be used as voltage follower, right? OK. So unless you know you know the problems uh, you know the, the formulas associated with the problems uh, you wouldn't be able to solve it okay. so the next uh, topic that we'll be looking into is limiting circuits okay. something which limits the inputs something which tips off the inputs something which actually reduces the input waveform okay. so as you all can see here okay um, the the inputs are actually you know uh, uh, clipped off right so it should have been here but then it's not happening and uh, this waveform had to be continued right but it's not continued okay so that's because it has been set as a threshold value and it is clipped off okay so for that we're going to use uh, two diodes and of course these are not normal diodes but then we are going to connect signal diodes how will you know that it's a signal diode based on the symbol right uh, it looks like an s right okay for the normal diode it's going to be a straight line and for this it's not going to be so reverse breakdown uh, we're going to explore the option of reverse breakdown in this signal diode okay so we're going to connect them back to back d1 and d2 both are zener diodes okay and uh, we have this r2 in the feedback network r1 is here towards the input and r3 is as usual here okay v0 is going to be my output value okay right back to back connected zener diodes are used and uh, these are used to clip off the peaks so whatever peaks that i have here so those sections are actually uh, taken off so this section is taken off here and uh, you know, this this portion is taken off here right so accordingly you can see those waveforms appearing okay one diode is forward biased and the other one is reverse biased so because we have connected them back to back right so if if i'm if i'm having a positive potential here and a negative potential so this becomes d2 in forward bias and d1 becomes reverse biased okay. when the output voltage is greater than vz plus vf okay so feedback voltage and zener voltage vf and vz so that is or we can even uh, call it as uh, the forward voltage so that is the forward voltage drop of one diode plus the zener breakdown voltage of the other Okay, zener breakdown and the forward uh, voltage. Negative feedback causes the op-amp output to remain at levels that keeps the inverting input terminal close to the voltage at grounded non-inverting input. So here we are using uh, inverting configuration, right? And since the positive terminal is connected to ground via R3, so there is going to be a virtual ground concept here, right? virtual ground concept 
So as long as the output voltage is less than this limit, okay, uh, which limit Vz plus Vf, less than this limit, the circuit behaves as an inverting amplifier unaffected by the diodes. This kind of circuit is typically used to predict, to protect a device or a circuit that could be damaged by excessive input voltage. So you can think of stabilizers, right? You can think of, uh, uh, you know, them protecting your electronic devices. You could think of uh, probably your chargers, right? So if, if anything goes higher, then that potential your chargers inside also will have rectifiers it will have this limiting circuits right okay so anything that goes beyond that okay so here what they've done is they, they have the limit right they've, they've set the limit here so this is going to be the limit right so anything beyond that will be cut off so that's because of the property of zener diode right because it has the reverse breakdown potential right okay now um, there is a small change that we can actually do to this zener diodes right so of course these are also connected back to back just like how you can see here but we're going to add one extra a resistor here and we are uh, you know going to make it as a variable circuit right r3 is the same r1 is the same okay and i have this feedback resistance is also the same d1 d2 both are connected back to back but the only extra thing that i have here is r4 so this r4 is extra and not only extra uh, it is going to be a variable resistance so the same p clipper uh, modification for adjusting the output limiting voltage so it is called as a potentiometer potentiometer r4 so either i can increase or i can decrease the resistance so this is connected in series with r1 so which means it adds up to r1's value and the zener diodes are connected to the moving contact of r4 so as per you know the resistance selected right so the same lead is connected to both d1 and d2 suppose r1 r4 and r2 okay one four and two suppose all of these resistors are you know uh, equal and uh, vz plus vf is equal to four volts okay with the moving contact at the right side of R4. Okay, so let us take that. So let us assume that it is actually here at the right side of R4, right? Now the moving contact is there. And I have R1, R4, and R2, okay, which is the feedback resistance to be the same. Okay, so we are going to come out with an equation which is V0 max. So the maximum voltage that I can get is nothing but vz plus vf which is equal to plus or minus four volts uh, if you know if if we have this four volts in mind so with the moving contact at the left side of r4 now let us assume that you know we will have at the extreme left side okay yeah at the extreme left side of r4 so we are two Okay, V R two plus uh, V R four voltage at resistor two at resistor four is equal to V Z plus V F, and that should be equal to uh, four volts. Okay, so let's take another um, condition where R two and R four both are equal. Okay, so when both are equal, voltages will be equal, and it's going to be plus or minus two volts. Okay. So what is going to happen? My V naught max is going to be V R two, which is equal to plus or minus two volts. So this R two, you know, is actually important for us, okay? And uh, by changing R four to the left and right, uh, we can vary how the output voltage changes. Right? We can either make it four or we can make it two. So the range is between two and four. Okay. So by 
means of moving the contact, the maximum output voltage can be between uh, two and four volts. Between two and four volts. So in this case, uh, it's actually between plus or minus Vz plus V. So this is nothing but the Zener breakdown voltage, the Zener voltage in short, and the forward voltage. Okay. So we can see that you know this Zener is also part of the feedback, and R2 is also part of the feedback, and R4 also becomes part of the feedback because we are connecting it here. Okay. Okay, when R4 is equal to R2, so we are going to have uh, Vz plus Vf. The circuit voltage remains minus R2 divided by R1 plus R4 until the output is output limit is reached. So, so till then, you know, it's going to be minus R2 divided by R1 by R4. Why minus? Because it's connected to the negative terminal, right? So once it's reached, if R if R2 and uh, uh, you know r4 it should be r4 if r2 and r4 are not equal then v not max is equal to vz plus vf divided by 2 so ultimately there's going to be an average of both uh, potentials to design a peak clipper circuit the zener diodes are first selected to limit the output voltage at desired level so we are going to select the zener diode first and then you know the clipping uh, circuit is designed bearing in mind that vf okay which is nothing but the forward voltage is about 0.7 volts so we, we need this forward voltage then the inverting amplifier is designed to have the required voltage gain so based on you know the value of resistances based on what kind of Zener diodes and based on this uh, 0.7 volts VF, right? So I am going to uh, calculate the gain of my amplifier. So it can be A1 in this case, because we just have one um, op amp. So when the output reaches the limiting uh, level, the path of the current through the resistor R1 flows through R2. So whatever current that we have here, okay, uh, that will actually flow uh, through R2, okay, so through R2 it will flow and then limiting happens, okay, R1 flows through R2 and part flows through the diodes, so R1, R2 and some part of the current will also flow through the zener diodes. So the resistor current must be greater than the minimum level required for zener breakdown. So whatever currents that are being passed through these resistors, these should be greater than the breakdown. Okay, so uh, why is that? If not, what is going to happen? Uh, there is going to be only breakdown and we are not going to experience any kind of uh, outputs. Okay, so the ranges are typically around 0.5 milli. And, okay. So always keep in mind whatever threshold is there, we should maintain a little more than threshold. Okay, so let's say you know if you consider a MOSFET, just like you know the threshold voltage being uh, 0 0.7 for silicon. If you uh, you know if you can maintain a voltage greater than 0 0.7, well and good. If you don't maintain, then what is going to happen? The transistor itself is not going to turn on. So can you expect any output from the transistor? Not at all, right? So you know, maintaining those higher values, you know, becomes very important. Now, this example here, okay, uh, is also just for your reference. And we will see how this is designed. Design an adjustable peak clipping circuit. So, when you hear the word adjusting, so which means it's going to be a potentiometer, right? And uh, uh, we're going to connect an extra resistance here, okay? Not the normal R1 and R2, but then we're going to have an extra R4 and uh, as usual two Zener diodes. So V0 is actually the combination of both and that is going to be uh, 5 volts. So in the question, right, we are given plus or minus 3 to 5. So we are taking 5, okay, design an adjustable peak, peak clipping circuit. Um, approximately 3 to 5 volts and the circuit is to have unity voltage gain before clipping so which means whatever um, inputs you're giving say 
two volts peak to peak and even the output also should be having two volts okay so that's called unity because two by two anyway gives you one okay so bz is equal to five i take vf the other side so five minus 0 0.7 so 4.3 so we are going to use uh, the model number one n seven four nine as our senior diode now i1 yeah. is actually made greater than you know this value which is about 500 microamps now what is this 500 microamps this is nothing but the minimum voltage that is actually required for these uh, diodes to work properly right so i am going to maintain i1 greater than 500 microamps so i1 i will put it as 2 milli okay i am going to take as 2 milli and uh, be not okay if the output is going to be 3 volts so see with the specifications given here you can understand that it's ranging between three to five volts so it can be three it can be four it can be five and all that is possible you know with the help of you know this range can be changed with the help of r4 right with the help of r4 i can actually change it okay so r2 is nothing but uh, uh, output by the input current the minimum so i'm taking three here okay the minimum i'm going to start with three divided by uh, two milli. okay so i have taken as two so r2 i can take it as 1.5 okay uh, i'm getting as 1.5 so it's a standard so i'm going to use the same thing now r4 the resistance across r4 that is the variable one right variable one is equal to v naught the maximum which is five volts minus minimum so five minus three is two volts so voltage across vr4 is going to be two volts r4 is equal to vr4 divided by i1 so vr4 we already have <coughs> i1 we have as two milli right so r4 i can take it as one kilo and this is also um, going to be a standard value of course it's a potentiometer so i'm going to vary it now this is a condition given here right um, i have to make sure that acl is equal to one so which means my closed loop gain should be one right so how do i do it i make sure that r1 plus r4 is equal to r2 see because the gain is only dependent on r2 isn't it so if i can make r2 higher then amplification happens if i can make this equal then is there any amplification not at all right so i am going to make sure that you know if i add both of these it is equivalent to r okay so r1 is equal to r2 i take r4 the other side so 1.5 is already there okay for r2 that is from here and uh, minus one okay so r4 how much is r4 we have 1k right so 1k is taken so so we are remaining with 500 ohms right so we are going to use a standard value which is 470 so similarly i calculate r3 okay r3 is in parallel combination right r1 plus r4 gives me one resistor okay in parallel with r2 so what did we learn from this problem make sure what is your um, you know lowest output voltage and make sure what is your highest output voltage okay and accordingly calculate or you can probably do maximum minus minimum and then you will get a certain potential right so that is going to be the potential across that variable resistor in our case it is here r4 right so keeping that and keeping this important thing here because we don't need uh, you know we need to maintain acl is equal to one so i have to make sure that this condition is kept in mind okay. now there's a concept called dead zone right so what is this dead zone that zone is, you know, uh, probably like, you know, for a certain amount of time, you know, we keep it dead, which means there's nothing there. There's no output whatsoever, right? So you can see the output voltage here for a certain amount of time, it is zero, right? Even though I'm giving my input voltage, the sine voltage here, uh, you know, but still I'm not getting an output voltage for a certain amount of time. So it's, it's as good as dead. 
right? So we will see how this works. Uh, R4 is the same, R2 is the same, but we are going to have combinations of two normal diodes here, right? And these are not going to be your Zener diodes, these are the normal diodes. And with the feedback network, okay, I'm going to have R3 and R1. So not only that, I'm including something called the reference. Along with input voltage, I am having the reference voltage also. So till that point, it should be nullified. And after that point, I should get it. Right? So yeah, so let's look into it in detail. The circuit is a precision half wave rectifier. Uh, with the addition of R1 and a DC reference voltage. So R1 is extra, right? So R1 is extra and uh, DC reference voltage, which is VREF is extra, okay? If R1 and V reference were absent, okay? So let's assume that, you know, R1 is not there, okay? And this V reference is also not there. So this is going to work, you know, as good as your inverting configuration. Right, so inverting configuration. Now, if the diodes were absent, now let us say, you know, D1, D1 is not present, okay? If the diodes were absent, that is D1 open circuited and D2 is short circuited, okay? So which means this is just fully connected here. Okay, I don't have anything there. And uh, of course we have this R3. So in this way, uh, you know, the arrangement would constitute an inverting summing circuit right summing circuit so this is connected here and uh, you have um, okay now in this case you're going to have the resistors right you're going to have the resistor so which means i need to uh, take out this from here okay now we are considering only uh, not having diodes so this will you know look like uh, summing configuration right because i have two resistors here r1 and r2 Okay. So, in fact, when the op-amp output goes positive, okay, uh, that is forward biasing D2. So, whenever D2 is forward bias, uh, D1, of course, gets into reverse bias. The circuit functions exactly as a summing circuit. Okay. So, there comes an important formula for us. Okay. So, D D2 is forward bias, so which means it's working and d1 is reverse bias so which means it's not working so this becomes like a summing circuit so reference i have something input also i have something right so if i give reference zero okay and uh, if i if i can you know add them up okay and of course as you know this is going to be in virtual ground concept because the positive potential positive terminal is connected to ground via r4 right so what is going to happen this will also slowly try to be in the virtual ground concept but then you know it will try to add them up so here i'm giving zero so which means up till this point you know up till this point it's going to be zero till it can see the next cycle so the first circuit you know functions exactly as a summing circuit okay and uh, we have an output of v naught is equal to minus v reference plus vi this is important please make note output voltage is equal to minus of v reference plus vi so i am adding both of these inputs vi and v reference i am adding both okay So now, um, since I'm adding them both, right? So if V reference is equal to zero, then uh, my output is also going to be zero. So it's as good as having a dead output. So that's called a dead zone circuit, right? So when a question is asked, you can just put in this circuit and you can give in the waveform and explain how, you know, when, when D1 is reverse bias, what happens? When D2 is forward bias, what happens? So on that can be explained. Now let us dive deep into it and we will see a few more functionalities of this dead zone circuit. Okay. So the reference uh, voltage is positive quantity. So 
so it's not minus something but then i just have zero so the reference voltage positive quantity if v not equals zero v reference tends to drive the op amp output in negative direction so this is like you know uh, maintaining the potentials between both inverting and non inverting terminals so since i have a v reference here and this is going into you know ground then maybe this will be increased and this will also once i increase this this also will get increased so ultimately the potential also will change here because see v1 is also connected and v reference is also connected so in this situation v1 becomes forward biased so in which situation when i have a uh, vi okay which is given greater and v not v not is equal to zero so v reference tends to drive the output of op amp in negative direction because positive is connected to ground and it's a virtual ground concept in this situation d1 becomes forward bias and v not remains at ground level so so this potential is taken here this is forward bias v reference is taken a little uh, positive right v reference tends to drive the op amp output in a negative direction because this is a negative feedback right okay fine to drive the op amp uh, output terminal in positive direction vi must be given negative and have a level greater than the positive level of uh, v reference so i need to make sure that i am giving a negative potential here okay because it's inverting right so if it's an inverting configuration when i give a positive the negative is coming when i give a negative then positive should come out right so ultimately i should give my uh, positive potential here and make sure that i uh, have a positive uh, negative negative at my input and i get positive at my output so let's take an example right so if v reference is uh, say 1 volt okay and uh, vi okay let's mark it up it is 1 volt and vi must become slightly more negative okay let's take minus 1 to drive the op amp inverting input terminal below the level it's non inverting and thus the output goes to positive because of the amplification right because of the amplification also so the output uh, will not move from ground level until okay until it is going greater than v reference so vi should be made greater than v reference so until then the output will not move from ground level so you know this is like a control knobs for me vi and v reference i can make sure when uh, you know it needs to be zero and when the output can actually increase so these two knobs are actually important for me v reference and v i so when this occurs uh, d2 is forward biased okay because i'm getting a positive potential here so d2 gets into forward bias and d1 becomes reverse biased right and the output becomes the sum of v reference plus vi okay let's say a uh, reference i give it as 1 volt and vi is minus 4 okay so i am i am going to have v not is minus of right so it's an it's an inverting so i should be getting about 3 volts okay so this is how you know you try to maintain uh, for a certain amount of time and then you try to get your output so the circuit operates uh, output remains at ground level until vi okay exceeds v reference so vi should be going more than v reference okay then only uh, you will be getting the output potential so the output is peak portion of the negative input that exceeds the reference voltage level so you can think of it like a reference like a threshold right it should be greater than the threshold it should not be less than the threshold so reference and vi both should work hand in hand only this part of the input wave is passed and all the other portions of the input have no effect on the output 
but you know that's what you're seeing here okay. that's what you're seeing here. the ineffective portions of the input are set to occupy a dead zone okay so whatever that you see you know which is not making any difference right just like this straight line you can probably consider it dead uh, you can think of you know the pulses right when you when you look at the the pulses right uh, example the heart pulses right you can see the uh, pulses going up and down the heart rate right when when you don't find anything then you know you you turn the person dead because there is no any pulses seen so the same thing you know is compared here um, and we say that it's actually in the dead zone up till up till this point it is in dead zone okay the reference voltage can be set to any convenient level positive or negative and it can be made adjustable if desired so if desired you know it's a combination of reference and vi so i can make it positive i can make it negative right i can do it. as an alternative to making the reference adjustable the resistor r1 could be made adjustable like uh, you know probably uh, you can you can probably put like a potentiometer here right and uh, you know that becomes a kind of uh, adjustable uh, r1 okay for example v reference is equal to 1 volt and r1 uh, can be two times of r2 so so this r1 can be made two times of r2 okay so that's again another uh, uh, you know kind of setting that is given so so at this point right till this point we find that the circuit remains in dead so because there is no outputs whatsoever so let us solve a solve small problem here okay and uh, we will see how this works um, as mentioned uh, problems are not needed but then i am including it so that you will understand the design so using a, a by fpt opam uh, design a dead zone circuit to pass only the upper one volt so i need to pass only the upper one volt portion um, and that to positive half cycle okay so key points here upper one volt and uh, only from the positive half cycle of sine wave input and it is having a value of 3 volts peak to peak so which means from 0 to 3 okay is uh, so plus 3 and minus 3 right so that means your peak to peak so let us solve it now so v reference is equal to vp the peak voltage minus 1 okay? because the upper one we are want to make it as you know dead zone or we want to clip it off so this is 3 volts minus 1 so v reference i should keep it as 2 volts because the upper one only has to pass so from uh, you know, uh, till 1 volt it should be dead from 1 to 2 also it should be dead but from 2 to 3 you know it should start working maybe you know you can think of this line as an example let me just write here okay. and, uh, zero okay three and uh, 1.5 comes here maybe two comes here yeah so so up till this point okay so up till this point it should be a dead zone and uh, it should start working okay so it should start working in the upper one volt upper one volt is given here so two to three only it should work right okay so i r1 okay so i r1 we're going to take it as uh, 500 micro okay so r1 is going to be reference here i r1 so 2 divided by 500 so r1 is going to be 4 kilo ohms i don't have it as standard 3.9 instead will be used r2 r3 r1 all i'm going to maintain at uh, 3.9 so this R4, uh, you know, is equal to R1, R2, R3. So where is this R4? You can, you can just go back to the circle. R4. Okay. So this is the resistance that we are referring to. So 3.9 is already received here. Okay. So yeah. 
one point three is going to be the value of R four. Mm. Okay, so this kind of problems can be asked, you know, where the reference is given, you know, uh, and uh, we're going to look at the upper one mold. Okay, so I hope now you have understood what is this upper one mold, just operating in the uh, uh, the last you know two to three volts range. Okay, so in this case, this is how you know these examples are solved. Okay. Now uh, we can actually you know design a precision clipper based on dead, dead, dead zone circuit, right? So this is our dead zone circuit. We had an op-amp, two diodes, right? And then we had R1, R2, R3, R4, right? So now we are going to make small modifications here. Okay. Uh, D1, D2 is here, right? R1, R2, R3, R4 is here. But then I am adding one more circuit here, right? So that is nothing but summing circuit. So we already had this dead zone circuit here. Okay, dead zone circuit we have already studied. Now this becomes our final precision clipper. So you know, in everything we need accuracy, right? We do not just want uh, uh, something to be, you know, probably a ten percent good and ninety percent bad, right? Uh, you can probably imagine uh, the vaccines, you know, right now that we are all looking into. Right, uh, if some vaccine is having an efficacy of ten percent, you know, who would like to take it? Right, we need precision, we need accuracy, we need more efficiency, we need more performance. Right, so so if something is giving us probably about uh, 95, 96 uh, percent of uh, efficacy, right? So obviously we will uh, like to you know, opt for it. So similarly here, uh, it's not only about clipping. Uh, the values it's not only about uh, making a certain uh, portion dead but then we need precision along with it okay so what we do is we add a summing so okay. so now i will have two stage of amp. the first stage is going to be dead zone and the second stage is going to be the summing circuit okay fine so the dead zone uh, circuit is redrawn and its output is applied when inverting uh, summing circuit. So this is done at point P. Okay. Now here also, you know, we are taking different points. Okay. So at this point is where we are going to uh, give my summing circuit, and from V I. Okay. So that's going to be with point A. Okay. So the waveforms at terminals A and B are as shown. So V I is going to be this input, right? So, which means it's going to be a sign, and at VB, we're going to get this. Remember, dead circuit, the output of dead circuit. So, the same waveform is redrawn here. Okay. Now, I will also have V reference. I have not shown here V reference, right? But then I have shown at the bottom. Okay. I have not shown between VI and VB, but then at the bottom. So, V reference here up till this point, and then, you know, that is actually clipping off. Okay. So, here, I can get my precision. So V naught is uh, V A minus of V A plus V B. Okay. So V naught is minus of V A plus V B. So V A is going to be equal to V I, right? The same thing is taken up here, and um, so V I and uh, V B, okay, or V A and V B, and it's going to be inverting format. Why is it inverting format? Because both of these op-amps are in inverting configuration. So basically here, you know, this summing circuit is in the inverting format. So the output is seen to be inverted uh, input waveform with its positive peak clipped off precisely at the level of V reference. So how much ever V reference you give, Okay, so much it will be clipped off. Say you reduce the V reference, so you know then uh, probably still more it is cut off. Okay, if you increase, then probably I might get some more waveform at the positive side, positive cycle. Right. So based on the variation of this V reference, I'm able to clip off uh, the circuit. Okay, so hence another you know, term comes up, which is called uh, precision clipper precision clip okay so in your final exam 
uh, your semester exam, then questions are asked, right? So first you need to explain what is dead zone circuit. You need to explain what is a clipper, and then you need to combine those circuits, and then you can draw the final circuit and the waveform. Okay. So based on the marks, so if the marks is you know for about ten marks, then you can explain all of those. If if it's Plus, say seven marks, then you know uh, you can you can explain the operation of dead zone circuit, and then you can come here. Um, if it's just say five marks or three marks or something in that, then you can uh, directly draw the circuit and explain the operation and waveform. Okay, right. Um, this is actually not needed for your syllabus point of view, but then I have put up here because this has both, uh, you know, the positive clipping and uh, the negative clipping. So it kind of combines uh, things here, right? So how do I do it? I am able to have a dead zone circuit. There are two dead zone circuits. One, uh, one will take care of the positive side, and the other one will take care of the negative side. The only difference that I'm going to do here is I'm going to play around with the diodes. Okay, so you can see here diode D1 and D2 are connected back to back. Okay, um, and here also it's connected back to back, but in the reverse fashion. So, so one will take care of the positive cycle, and the other one will take care of the negative cycle. So at VB, okay. At VB, at this point, I'll be getting, um, you know, this waveform here. Let me just... <clears throat> yeah. So this is going to be my VB, okay. And at VC, okay, I'm going to get this. So one is going to be at the positive, uh, positive waveform. One is going to take it with the positive, and the other one with the negative. So how does it work? With the addition of a third input to the summing circuit and additional dead zone, okay. So I'm having two V references here. I'm having one input voltage and VA, VB, VC, okay? and I'm going to have a summing circuit. So the output of the additional Z dead zone applied to terminal C of the summing circuit is the negative peak of the inverted input. When the waveforms at terminals A, B, and C are summed and inverted, the output is an inverted version of VI. So VA, VB, VC, when you add them, and uh, you, know, you will be able to find your final waveform so your final waveform see ultimately it's a summer right so summer means it's going to add up things which are given as inputs so you know uh, your output voltage here is va plus vb plus vc what are voltage at a point at b point at c point all these voltages are added but then remember it's going to be a, a 180 degree phase shift right okay so design of a precision clipper involves uh, design of each dead zone circuit and uh, uh, design of summing circuit. So each dead zone uh, takes care of one cycle and the summing uh, circuit ultimately adds them up. Okay. Dead zone circuit requires design of inverting amplifier constituted by R2, right? So R2 we have here, okay. and R3, R2 and R3, and the open. Selection of diodes and selection of V reference. So usually R1 is taken equal to R2. So R1 and R2 are made equal usually, and R4, so this R4 will be you know, made equal to the parallel combination of R1. R2 is anyway in parallel, R2, R3 we already knew. Right, so the additional that we have here is R1. So R1, R2 is in parallel with R3, okay. So the summing circuit uh, design again involves designing of an inverting amplifier, okay. Um, selection of R5 is equal to R6. So R5 and R6 are made the same, okay, and R7. So five, six, seven, all these three resistors are made the same and r9 r9 here okay is going to be in parallel with five six seven and eight okay so so accordingly you know we select the diodes we change the 
uh, terminals and then uh, each will take care of uh, the positive and the negative. So this is actually the complete uh, you know, precision clipping circuit. Okay, so if you say uh, the previous circuit was the complete, no, it's not because it just takes care of one portion of the circuit. It's as good as halfway with it, right? So this takes care of both, you know, uh, if you want to clip at the positive side or the negative side, based on your reference. So you will have three knobs here, VI, V reference one, V reference two. So based on these three knobs, right, you can actually uh, play around with your output voltage. Okay. So uh, in the next upcoming class, right, we'll be looking into sample and hold circuits, right? Uh, and uh, how, you know, these are actually done and you know, all those stuff we'll be looking into in our next class, right? So I think all of you have understood, right, what we have discussed so far, limiting circuits and uh, precision rectifiers, right? So keep all of these uh, points in mind so that you know, uh, it will be easy for you when you actually uh, uh, take up your examinations, right? Uh, you, know, you can uh, recall the circuits, its operations. So basically, you'll have to remember all those things that we studied from day one, right? Uh, including properties of an op and you know, what happens with the virtual ground concepts. See, we have been seeing all these concepts repeating time and again, right? Uh, with different circuits so most of the core concepts remains the same but then slight modifications here and there isn't it so that uh, you know changes how our circuit uh, you know operates right okay so you now can we end our session today yeah and we'll try catching up in the next class yeah is that okay students yes sir so, fine. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you, sir. Yeah.